Okay, so the question is, what percentage is financially motivated of hacking? What percentage is like fun and academic and one's government? We have no idea about government, but a lot of it appears financially. Do you have a, a comment? Yeah, actually for most of the cases, uh, like, uh, like a commercial products. But the government have no ideas, you know. Even I have ideas I, I will not disclose here, right? <laughs> so that's the reason that I, I suppose most of them are selling products like that, selling their products, packaging the software to selling. But most of the time is to, for the target is to stealing the game accounts, game the credentials. All right, so you know, in our opinion and his as well, it's mostly financially motivated. Like there's, uh, the forum exchange is academic, but the actual hacking activity is, is commercialized. Uh, question right here in front. Can you describe the dynamic between, say, the Russian underground and the Chinese underground or any rivalries or conflicts between Chinese hacker groups in the country? So the question is to describe the dynamic or rivalries between the Russian hacker community and the Chinese hacker community. Um, I'll just give a little bit of opinion. I, I do see a difference in the tools and the way they develop the tools. Russian tools tend to be very, very advanced and um, complex and, and elegant. Chinese tools tend to be very prolific, lots of them. There's tons and tons of stuff. May not necessarily be that advanced. That's, that's the, really the only insight I have. I don't know if Anthony has any. The, the Russian underground is also significantly different in the way that they communicate. Um, the Chinese black hat community is very upfront and open. I mean, you can do a, basically a Google search for them and find them. The Russian underground is a lot more selective and a lot more hidden overall, so there's not a direct correlation there. And as to conflict between, I don't know if we've ever seen any evidence. I have no idea. Anthony, you have any ideas? I just found I could say that um, there's a, a, a large difference between, I mean, the quality, the Trojan quality between the Russia and also the China, China, China made the malware. Because most of them, like, they will copy, like, no, no, not, not copy, I'm sorry, they're referencing <laughs> other software <laughs> made for Trojan by other countries. Yeah. Yeah, we found a few, t a few tools or a few attacks that just on face value look Chinese, but once we reverse engineer them, they're actually Russian tools. So we have found that. I mean, another thing that's really telling is if you look at just the, the malware packs. I mean, all these are generating more or less impact style installations. Impact and other Russian made um, actual deployment packs of exploits are far more complicated than yeah. what these are doing. So. Yeah, the sophistication difference. Next question. Um, let's see, we'll do this guy right here and then you. So, so the question is, how um, efficient are the authorities in China to arrest hackers? And I'll defer that one totally to Anthony. You guys are always asking some sensitive questions, man. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Actually, the authority, um, I give you experience. I don't know this one arresting is uh, the efficiency, but I could share my personal experience. I have my friend working in mainland, then his computer is children, and go to the police station, and the police say that, what's going on? And that my, my computer is children. Yeah, um, so have you got lost any money? Any loss, did suffer any loss? No, okay, back to home, man. So essentially, if, if there's no major money loss, they don't do anything. Yeah, uh, however, for the, actually for the policy, I suppose they have already got a list of the policy. Yeah, the policy, the, I mean the authority policy to against the children and attack. However, the problem is um, rather you could find a very uh, significant, significant loss suffer from the victim. If they don't find it, they will simply put it the lower power priority. All right, so there's strong policies, but weak enforcement unless there's big loss. So then this question here. So this guy right here. Easy, you just use the QQ accounts and you, they just give you the bank account, use the SWIFT payment and the SWIFT code, SWIFT code like that. Okay, so the, so the question was how are they moving the money around and what Anthony's saying is they literally communicate via QQ and then hand each other bank accounts and do SWIFT payments. Pretty straightforward, I guess. A uh, guy in the red shirt here in the middle. Okay, so the question is how do we bridge the gap? Uh, number one, I think more 
like kind of what we're doing, more talks like this. I have an idea. I don't, I don't know if it'll work out of, you know, we did a Metasploit track the last couple of, like last year in, in Black Hat DC. I'd like to propose a, a China track and bring speakers from over there to sort of showcase. I've proposed it to Jeff and Ping and, you know, we'll see what happens. I don't know. Um, I suggest um, all of you guys could come to, I, I mean, to study more, like to work together, to share some of topics like the China. China or United States yeah. and work together on some topics. Let, let's so. all go to XCon. <laughs> we have to leave Sunday, but we'll. uh, next question. Uh, there's a guy right here in the white shirt. So how much of the game accounts normally work if they sell? What's the, what's the dollar value of associated with Sure. So the question was what's the dollar value associated with game accounts that get stolen? Actually for the game accounts it depends how many weapons do you have in your account. If you've got many weapons, then you could sell a lot of money, right? Huh. And also, the, yeah, based on, most likely depends on the number of weapons of the account holder. The uh, one number I saw is just that it's a $4 billion industry. I don't know individual accounts, what they're worth, but overall it's worth a lot of money. You could exchange the money with your weapons. Uh, blue shirt. So the question is, uh, in other areas of the world, we see like credit card theft, um, identity theft, and what we've been talking about mostly is like game account theft. And he's wondering, do we see, you know, also identity theft and credit card theft? And I think the answer is yes. Yeah, um, actually, I could say in China, the practice of using online banking is not very prevalent. Just focus on some major city like Beijing and Shanghai. But most likely, most of the comp uh, people uh, does not own their own computers. Sorry. Ben does not own their computers at home. They go to the cyber cafe. Okay. So that's the reason they just simply to pay the online games than to try to, to um, use the QQ to communicate with each other. So they will pay the money at the cyber cafe more. So much more, that, much more, 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 more most of the time is their game accounts, the reference there is there some kind of their assets. So most of the children are targets for them. There's a large population. But for you, if you come to China, if you go to the cyber cafe, you need to provide your identity card to register to identify your, your identification before you enroll in the cyber cafe. That's, that's the reason they, they would like to, I mean, the children right to target this market. Yeah, we have seen cases of where they steal, um, like, a hon equivalent to our social security numbers. You know, you have a identification number. They do steal that, although it's not really worth anything in China. You don't really have prevalent credit can't go and get a credit card with it. So you can, they steal, in a sense, they can steal private information, but it's not really valuable. They can't turn it's, that around and actually less valuable, huh? get something with it. Uh, yellow shirt. Yeah, so, so the question is, after you've stolen the gaming account data or whatever, how do they actually move? Um, what are the margins on? Yeah, I could say that it is quite e e efficient because uh, you'll find my slide actually for in two, two, this year, expect one, 100 billion uh, uh, RMB Chinese dollars will be, from, from, will be earned in the children market. Uh, for the sales of the children, and also the sales of the credentials. And that, because when you sell the credentials, like the bank, like the online game accounts, they get back the money. And so sells the tools, they get the money. Also the hacker, hacker training school and the forum subscription fee, also another way of the, of the revenue. I mean, and one thing that's interesting is that the, because the cost of living is low, the returns on individual stolen accounts don't have to be very high to be really valuable. So maybe in our terms, money-wise, it might not be as much as like a, a credit card theft here, but in terms of their livelihood and their, you know, their standard of living, it's actually valuable. Do you, do you think the authorities would get kind of pissed that there's that much money in a market and they're not controlling it, involved, big, whatever? 
So the question is, are, would the authorities be upset that there's that much money in the market that they don't control? Um, yeah, I I wouldn't venture to guess what the authorities think. Yep, actually, I have no idea about it. Yeah. That, uh, so the guy in the black here, and then we'll go to the guy in the red. As the, uh, as the So the question is, um, as we outsource more code development to places like China, they obviously have a lot of free access to malicious code. What are the risks? Well, I think the risks for backdoors are pretty high. Um, you know, I don't necessarily have statistics about that because we haven't reverse engineered U.S. products looking for Chinese backdoors. But you know, anytime you have large numbers of people doing stuff, 10% are going to be bad. So you have to assume that it's going on. All right, the guy in the red here. Yeah, right. Yeah, so the question is, we stated that there's strong policies, but weak enforcement unless there's a large money loss. And he's asking, whose money? So obviously, if it's US money, I don't think they're going to care. If it's internal money to China, then they'll, they'll do something. No, no, there, there's just as much attacks going on within China I mean, that, that's one of the big points that Anthony was trying to make is that QQ, like all the stuff in China, they're hacking Chinese people. I mean, that's where the, the majority of those targets are for this type of activity is in China itself. you have any comment or is that? Actually, for if you're talking about um, international hacking stuff, right? So much more related to the botnet stuff. So um, for the botnet stuff, of course, um, some many computers in China because the uh, I mean security hardening, the control is not really strong enough. So they will ma being ma manipulate to install some um, some broadnet there and being controlled to spread it out to spread out like to to spread out some bots there. So it is already like this kind of uh, model also infect other. I mean to spread out the attack. Yeah. So so that's a good point. One of the big financial models is to hack a bunch of machines outside of China to build them as botnets and then sell the botnet service inside of China and monetize it that way. Um, so yeah, that, that's another model. Next question. Lady right here. Yeah, so the question is what's the role of China CERT? Is it similar to the US CERT? And yes, Anthony I could say that. yes. Because they are simply like the computer emergency response team there. Yeah, to do some kind of uh, like the response like that. I think they, they mostly do like information reporting. Is that they collect statistics about attacks and report it? Yep, you're right. Yeah. Okay, you said there were 2.5 million more than the previous year. Yeah. So the question is, is there concern in the country and are they trying to control all the malicious hacking? Mm, actually, like, um, he, it is a, a problem in China. They know it. However, the problem is the I mean, awareness or even the, the budget or resources in different companies or, or companies does not got enough to spend it on the security controls. And you find the frigates like the CISSP, then the frigates in, in China is very little population, a small population. So that's the reason they, they put the administrator to, to work on the security stuff, administration all, all together. However, they don't spend a lot of time resources on that. So, um, so that's the reason most of them, uh, I mean companies, uh, servers are being targeted and being chosen. So that's another good point. Um, the security infrastructure in China is pretty weak, like as far as defensive, the defensive communities are very strong. And so what he's saying is they know that that's a big problem and that's part of what I think we're trying to do is help raise the awareness.